So in this video, I'm going to go over how to use the area plan tool, how to create as many different custom area plans per floor as you need, how to create uh, custom color schemes, and finally how to schedule your area plans as well. So right out of the box, Revit gives you a couple basic area plan tools you can start with. Um, and they work fine, but I'll show you how to create custom ones as well. So to create a basic gross area plan, um, in this case from our first floor, I'm going to go to the architecture tab, pull down area, choose area plan, select my first floor, and then choose gross building. When I hit OK, um, it asks if it wants to cr automatically create the boundary lines for me. I don't have to. I can say no, and I can draw those boundary lines myself. But I'll just show you what the tool does automatically for you. So I'm going to click Yes. And if I zoom in, you can see these purple area plan boundary lines have been placed on the exterior face of the exterior walls. An area has been placed in the boundary, and it's been tacked. You can also see it's automatically added a view to my browser for the first floor gross area plan here. Now, the other automated area plan type Revit gives you is the rentable one. Um, so again, I can make a rentable area plan for my first floor. I'll just go under the architecture tab, pull down area, choose area plan, rentable, first floor, and hit OK. Again, I, could, I, I don't have to let it automatically draw the lines for me. I could say no, and then I could create my own boundary lines. But just to show you what the computer is doing for you, I'll hit yes. You see in my browser, browser that it's created a new uh, first floor area plan under rentable. In this new area plan that's given me, if I zoom in enough, you can see the area um, boundary lines are on the interior face of the exterior wall. And it's following some BOMA rules by placing the lines along the uh, exterior face of the window glass as well. Now, even if I've uh, let the computer place the boundary lines myself, I can still uh, modify them and edit them um, and, and change them. Chances are, though, in your project, you're probably going to want uh, more than, the, than just these two types of area plans per floor. You might want to uh, split it up based on um, different occupancy groups or lab areas or uh, whatever the case may, might be. But out of the box, uh, Revit only gives you two different types per floor because, again, it, it can't let you overlap area lines because um, it's just like um, overlapping rooms. So that means you have to kind of create your own uh, custom area type schemes. So to do that, to add um, an additional area type scheme along with your gross and your rentable, we're going to go to the area portion of the ribbon, pull down room and area, choose area and volume computations. Here it pulls up the window and instead of the computations tab I'm going to choose area schemes. Here you can see the gross building and rentable type it's already given you. We're just going to hit new to, to add a new area scheme. I'll go ahead and call it custom one. And under the description, just for the sake, I'll just call it custom. Again, um, for every additional area plan per floor you want, you have to create a new scheme. So you would create as many different types as you need. You know, you might call it lab areas or uh, type or code plan areas. Once I'm done creating all my types, I hit OK. Now I can uh, use that scheme. I'll, again, I'll go to the pull down the area, click on area plan. Uh, in this case, I'll choose custom and first floor. Um, in this case, instead of having it place boundary lines for me, I'll say no, so I can place my own boundary lines. And here, uh, let's say, for example, it's for labs or something. So I'm going to create my own uh, area boundaries by going to the Architecture tab, choose Area Boundaries. With my drawing tool, I can choose uh, whatever drawing tools I want, just like an Align tool. I'll kind of throw them out here as if they're different lab areas. I'll also... Um, define boundaries in my little office spaces here as well.
And once I've uh, drawn all my area boundaries, now I need to place areas in them just like I would with the area tool or with a room tool. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of the tool. Under the architecture tab, I'm going to go back to pull down area and in this case choose area. And then just drop them in like I would a room. And I'll hit escape once to get out of the, the place area tool. Now you can see um, it's created these areas for me and it's areas work a lot like rooms. Um, when I select an area, it has properties, it has, um, you can name it. You can uh, define a type. In this case, I'll call it admin. Once you've got all your uh, areas named and defined, uh, you can place a color scheme down um, on your area plan as well. And that is located under, I believe it's uh, the annotate tab, and then go to color fill, and just click it and drag it on. Here it asks you which scheme to use. Under the space type and color scheme, you might not have any um, custom ones created yet. So go ahead and hit OK. And it will automatically um, color in the spaces um, and, uh, um, and uh, create a legend for you. Again, the, the color legend works just, like, just the same as the room area legend, um, if you've seen that video. But uh, just in case you haven't seen it, the way you create your own uh, custom schemes, let's say you want to uh, change them all by, by name or, or by area, what, however you want to color these things. You're going to create a new scheme for each different way you want to color it. So go ahead and choose the, the legend itself and up in the ribbon click edit scheme. And the edit color scheme dialog box pops up and this is where you add as many different types of schemes as you want to. You can see that this particular scheme called Scheme 1 is coloring by area type. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and rename it just to make it a little bit more organized for myself. And I'm, I'm going to name these things by what they're coloring. I want to, now let's say I want to add a new area uh, color scheme and I want it to color it by the name of the areas. So um, to the left here under the duplicate button, I'm going to call it out as uh, by name, uh -oh, it's a good name. And under what it's coloring, instead of area type, I'm going to choose by name, and hit OK. Hit OK again, and you can see it's changed it out. So now, um, as these name, as these areas have different names, it will assign different colors to them. Now to change the colors themselves. Again, go to Edit Scheme and click uh, next to the individual area uh, and, and change its color type there. Again, if you, if you choose the pull down area, you can see there's a, a, a really big variety of uh, different ways that you can, uh, different ways that you can color these legends and different schemes that you can create. So finally, after you've uh, created your area plans and you've added a color legend to them and created as many different uh, custom color schemes as you want to, uh, if you wanted to create a room area legend, just go up to view, uh, excuse me, a, a room area schedule, go up to the view tab, um, click on schedules and new, and you can just create a new schedule for it by um, selecting its category and choose areas. And however many different uh, types of areas, uh, schemes you've created. So again, um, to, to create a new schedule, just choose New Schedule. And under the category, choose Area Custom 1. Hit OK. Add the fields uh, from it that you want. And hit OK. Again, just to uh, reiterate in, in case my video blipped by that, to create a schedule, you're going to go to View, click on the Schedule button here, 
And under the category, choose uh, area by, by category, whichever uh, scheme that you're trying to create an air, a schedule from. Click OK. Um, under the properties, add the fields that you want to. And then hit OK. And that's uh, the schedule based on your area plan as well.